Welcome to another spirit-filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video. As well, I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. Glory be to Jesus. Someone is giving God quality thanks. Give him all the praise. Give him all the praise, all the glory. The wonder working power of our God, the wisdom that flows from his word. This will be your encounter tonight. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. That the Lord will visit you. Are you praying? Father, tonight let it be my night of visitation. Let it be a night of encounter that I will never be the same. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Spirit of the living God, we pray that you will breathe upon us tonight. Every time we gather, we gather because you have called for us. And when you call for a people, it is to bless them, it is to lift them, it is to reveal yourself the more. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that tonight will be an extraordinary night of encounter. Amen. Prune us, build us, enlighten us, empower us in the name of Jesus. And as your word comes, let it bring healing to the sick, deliverance to the oppressed, hope to the hopeless in the name of Jesus we vow as always that you will be glorified and exalted in Jesus mighty name we pray one thing we ask of you one thing that we desire is that as we worship you lord come and change sing it again one thing we ask of you one thing that we desire that as we worship you lord prophesy over someone in the name of Jesus may the Lord arise on your case tonight
may my God arise for you tonight. May he take away shame and reproach from your life tonight. In the name of Jesus. And I declare over you that every tree that has not been planted by my Father, at the instance of God's word, may it be uprooted forever. Uprooted forever. Uprooted forever. In the name of Jesus. For someone I speak to you, weep not for the book is open. Weep not for the book is open. I call your days of weeping and mourning over. I call your days of weeping and mourning over. Every cause sitting upon your head, your family, your destiny, your life, I decree and declare may it be rolled away forever. May it be rolled away forever. And Sarah said, God has made me to laugh and that all who here will laugh with me. May the Lord give you the blessing of Sarah, the kind of blessing that causes you to laugh. In the name of Jesus Christ. And the Bible says, and Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. I prophesy to you shame, reproach, mediocrity, and smallness. I curse it from your life forever. I curse it from your life forever. I curse it from your life forever. It says, you have turned my mourning to dancing and my sorrow to joy. I speak to you. Let sorrow give way in your life. Let sorrow give way in your life. Let sorrow give way in your life. In the name of Jesus. I pray for you. May my God give you rest round about. Rest round about. Rest round about. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Everything God declared over your life from January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, now November. Let this be your month of performance. 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 Anyone saying, where is your God? This is the month your result will answer them. May your result answer them. My Bible says, surely there is an end. For you I prophesy, shame comes to an end. Reproach comes to an end. Captivity comes to an end. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. For your shame receive double. For your shame receive double. I say to you again, for your shame receive double. In the name of Jesus. Job 42 verse 10, the Bible says, And God turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his brethren, and God restored Job. God restored. He gave twice. I pray for you. Everything that has left your hand, and not by God, whether by demons, whether by error, whether by mistake, whether by ignorance, I decree and declare by prophecy, may it gravitate back to your destiny. May it gravitate back to your destiny. In the name of Jesus. In Luke chapter 15, the Bible says a woman was given 10 silver coins and for whatever reason, she lost one. And even though she had nine left, her hunger insisted that she must find that one. I don't care what is working in your life. My concern is the area that is not working. In this season, God will bring completion. Someone did not receive it. I said, God will bring completion. In the name of Jesus. It says, he that told you have receive nothing it says ask that you may receive that your joy may be full may the fullness of joy be your portion in the mighty name of jesus christ please turn around to your left and right greet someone and you may be seated turn to your left and then to your right and tell someone this is koinonia I welcome everyone in the name of Jesus. It's an honor to be 
in the house of the Lord, the psalmist said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. My God will do you good tonight. In the name of Jesus. Even though you have been appreciated, this is a house of honor. Let me one more time appreciate all those who are worshiping with us for the first time. You have come from outside of this city. You have come from outside of this nation. We receive you in the name of Jesus. And we declare the blessing of the Lord and the blessing upon this house. Let it rest upon you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Um, we want to appreciate and bless the Lord for um, Mrs. K. Jim Ovia, the wife of the chairman of Zenith Bank. May God bless you. Let's give her a big God bless you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ma. The Lord bless you in the name of Jesus. And then Mrs. Jenny Adioshun, the wife of the former Minister of Finance. May the Lord bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. We appreciate you and um, we use this too as an opportunity and as a, a reference to say God bless you and welcome to everyone who is truly deserving of honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Two announcements very quickly. Um, I promised us last week that I would bring more announcements about our medical outreach so please allow me a minute to do that it will be on the 23rd now there are two sessions one session will be a training a training for um our doctors paramedics we're having consultants come from john hopkins a few within nigeria here and so all those who desire to be part of the training please you would need to register after service just go to the pr desk or the medical stand and you'll be guided on how to register but i see that there is a qr code i don't know how many people they can take and i don't know if it will be streamed online i doubt but um, you can get all of that information the venue will be daughters of abraham our other venue and it will be friday the 22nd time is 9 a.m from so please make sure that whilst you register you plan to attend so that you don't stop others from attending and then not come yourself but i'm concerned about the saturday meeting it's an outreach we do this as a responsible ministry we do this as agents of change and we believe that we are also contributors to national development community development we cannot do everything but we can do our bid to see that we better the lives of people. And this is courtesy our media department, while allowing them that liberty of expression on our behalf to attend to those who would require medical, um, medical attention. A lot will be happening at that time. Um, I'm sure that they'll be attending to various kinds of needs. It will also double as a welfare program, of course, it won't be limited to just medical attention. We'll do our best to see that um, we're able to help enrich them with maybe a few foodstuff, whatever it is that can make their lives better. The venue will still be um, the Daughters of Abraham. It's 9 a.m. in the morning on the 23rd. Now we need more hands. You know that once you make a declaration that people will come to receive free medical treatment and free um, food you're going to have so many people and our hands are limited we have a robust uh, medical team but in truth for this kind of project will require a lot more hands so if you are in this place and you're a medical practitioner perhaps a lab scientist a pharmacist even a doctor or any expression around the medical field your hands your commitment your service is greatly needed after the service you can do well to register your intent to support and be part of this project um, giving us your intellectual resource so that we make this a reality we do not want to overstretch our medical team and for those who may not be part of the koinonia family but you want to serve in that capacity i believe there's room for you you can scan the QR code and then do well to reach the medical team for more information. Let's stretch our hands in one minute. Just pray over this project for the 22nd and the 23rd. That the Lord will empower our medical people. It will indeed be a medical outreach with a difference in the name of Jesus Christ. Are you praying? That they will not only receive treatment for their bodies, 
it will be an opportunity for them to come to the saving knowledge of Jesus. Our philosophy in this ministry is that everything that is done by one is done by all. All of us may not be there, but we are there in the spirit. Hallelujah. And then as always, we are a people who have been trained. And so I have the liberty to challenge us to also sow into this project. Um, not because the medical team is in want, the budget has been paid for in full, but it's a kingdom culture that every time you are doing anything that is pro-kingdom and you are within a family, it's important to participate, not just with your prayer, not just with your commitment, your presence, but also your resources. And so if you want to be a blessing to that project, why not? Um, you can meet the head of department and the treasurer and communicate your support adequately and the lord will bless you whilst you do that in the name of jesus the son of the living god amen and amen tonight's message seeks to impart upon you the finisher's grace tonight's message seeks to bring an end to short-term impact in the kingdom the lord placed a very strong burden in my heart to bring this teaching tonight Tonight's teaching will provoke you and bring hunger and dissatisfaction. No matter what you have done, no matter your level of accomplishment in the spirit, this is one message you should listen to that will challenge you to press for more, will plant in you a desire to stretch your appetite for more of God, and it will erode this cancer of complacency from your life and empower you to become a greater tool a greater witness for Jesus. I pray for you already that God will grant you the ears that hear. Are you saying amen? amen. That God will grant you the eyes that see amen. and that your profiting will appear unto all amen. in the name of Jesus. Tonight we are considering for a topic Micah chapter 2 and verse 10. This is not your rest. It says, Arise ye and depart. Micah chapter 2 and verse 10. It says, for this is not your rest, because it is polluted and it shall destroy you, even with a sore destruction. I'll read it one more time. It says, arise ye and depart from that place, that level, that face, that location, that realm. It says, for this is not your rest. There is a rest, but this is not your rest, because it is polluted, it shall destroy you, even with a sore destruction. This is not your rest. I'm challenging the arrival mentality. I'm challenging complacency, the cancer that has destroyed the great and stopped people from reaching completion. This teaching tonight is a press for completion. It is the kind of teaching that will insist upon your destiny that you move beyond progress to completion. Tonight's teaching imparts upon you the grace to finish, not just to go forward. This challenges you beyond an appetite for advancement and insists that you must finish. And for everyone under the sound of my voice, I speak over your life that what God has begun with you, in you, through you, may he finish it in Jesus' name. Amen. You will never be an aborted destiny. I'm only speaking to someone who is open to receive. You will never be an aborted destiny. And I pray for someone, may your life never be a negative lesson for others. That when others are being warned about how not to fail or how to fail, may your life not be the reference. In the name of Jesus Christ. Joshua chapter 13 and verse 1. Very profound and simple scripture. Now Joshua was old and stricken in years. And the Lord said to him, Thou art old and you are stricken in years. And there remaineth yet very much land to be possessed. You are old. You are stricken in age. You have sojourned for a very long time. You've made commendable progress. But it says... There remained yet very much land to be possessed. Let me start my teaching tonight by doing a recap. In one of the series, Navigating Prophetic Seasons, I began that series by challenging us on a scripture, Isaiah chapter 43, 
from verse 18 and 19 the bible says remember ye not the former things it says neither consider the things of old verse 19 says behold i do a new thing and it shall spring forth and shall ye not know it i will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert and i just want to draw out a few things that i communicated in that series number one how that overdwelling on the past you see remember that overdwelling on the past both negative and positive has a consequence on your destiny it has a consequence on your tomorrow the bible says remember ye not the former things provided it is former provided it is the past the bible gives you a caution that overdwelling on the past whether negative past or positive past has a negative effect overall on your destiny and i did teach us at the time that a positive past creates complacency creates pride creates overconfidence in discipline are we together now when people overdwell on their strides of yesterday when people overdwell on their accomplishments of yesterday yesterday can mean yester years yesterday can mean you know decades ago our world is full of people who will always remind you of pleasant stories of yesterday strides in the area of business ministerial strides family strides are we together academic intellectual educational strides our world is full of people who are passionate about reminding us of yesterday not necessarily for the purpose of pushing us into tomorrow but that that is the only story they have to tell the Bible says Jesus is the same yesterday but then it also considers today and considers forever over dwelling on a negative past even if positive can hinder your passion to finish your passion to press I have taught you in this house that many people today are failures because they once succeeded their greatest unbecoming was that there was a history of success in their lives oftentimes you find this most evident in the field of sports where you can find an athlete who becomes a celebrity a winner a champion by every definition for a period of time and then they plunge into some kind of decadence they deplete deteriorate erode and they become very very sorry versions of themselves um, we have this in the world of even in the academia you have this in the world of technology there are gadgets today that at the point they were discovered invented and manufactured it looked like the world would never have anything better an instance typewriters today we have a generation that does not even know what a typewriter looks like are we together we used to have all kinds of um, uh, gadgets for our viewing better marks VHS and then see these fluffy discs now people don't even know what that means the Bible says remember ye not the former things there are people whose only crown is in their yesterday are we learning now and so they are not able to move forward because they are so emotionally connected to the strides of yesterday they will tell you all kinds of stories i was once a commissioner i was a great man those days when we were anointed you will hear it as if god suddenly died from the throne those days when we used to raise people from the wheelchairs those days when we used to organize crusades those days when we were serious with god those days when i was a pastor those days when I used to pray, those days when I used to fast, not like now, I don't do all those things again, but those days, our lives and stories are full of those days. Those days on campus, I used to be on fire. Those days on campus. And today you wonder where the fire had gone. I'm praying for you. Whatever will have to make you to make reference to only yesterday, I cast that spirit from your destiny. Are we together? And then the Bible also talks about the possibility of meditating on a negative past. That also has a very adverse effect on your destiny. What does it do? Number one, it creates fear. There are three levels of fear. There's fear of yesterday, there's fear of today, and there's fear of tomorrow. And either ways, you will be met with a very, very grave consequence if you embrace any of the fears. There is the fear of yesterday. Usually, it is the fear that comes with history. I once tried and I failed. You heard the testimony of the dear lady submitting visas in spite of seeing God manifest through my face in her dream. 
the sister got the visa and then the gentleman didn't get the visa and he was angry he was you know and all of that you find those kinds of testimonies something happens when people fail is the reason why it's important to learn the laws of success early in life and the laws of the spirit early in life so that your success rate will be greatly minimized something happens to a human spirit if you have a track record of consistent failure are we together usually your mind builds your mind is educated from the lens of your failure there is a way you begin to look at life if and when you fail again and again and again there are certain possibilities your mind can no longer capture or easily capture for instance for an individual who would have failed all his life when you teach things like a grace called favor when you teach things like speed they will shout amen but the truth is there's no capacity to believe that kind of possibility it's never been captured in their lives hallelujah negative past can bring fear Two negative past can bring discouragement it can fight your passion to continue fight your passion to press there are people who you will try to challenge them and after wasting your time wasting minutes and even hours of motivation they will tell you I'm really um, thankful for your heart and your commitment for me but as for me I've concluded you find this most evident in the life of people who have suffered prolonged infirmities. If you've ever had anyone that you've had to manage their health for a very long time, a time comes they stop saying amen to prayers. And it's not just unbelief. It's what happens when your yesterday does not improve. When your yesterday keeps traveling into your today and even into your tomorrow. I'm praying for you. May yesterday come to an end over your life. I think it was in Koinonia, I preached one time that yesterday is a very, very jealous phenomenon. It always wants to relieve itself into your today. Yesterday is so jealous, it will never allow your today and your tomorrow go in peace. It is obsessed with relieving itself in your today. And you have to create that door and that border to say yesterday, thank God for the lessons learned, but as this door is shut, it will never open again. Maybe that's someone's prayer tonight. You're saying there are certain events, certain things that happen in your yesterday, failure, pain, regret, mistakes, challenges that you never want to find expression in your today and tomorrow. And I'm praying for you. Since you have desired to have a better today and a better tomorrow, the power that closes the door of yesterday permanently, may that power be released over your life in the name of Jesus Christ Philippians chapter 3 13 and 14 very profound scripture Philippians 3 13 14 Paul is speaking now brethren he says I count not myself to have apprehended are we learning now he says but this one thing I do forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before i like this i taught you already let's try it one more time first two words ready one to go i press again one last time it says i press i press towards the mark take note of that we'll revisit that statement in the course of our discussion i press towards the mark for the price of the high calling of god in Christ Jesus so it says remember ye not the former things I have learned from scripture and from experience honestly not because I'm preaching it that if you cannot learn how to look forward and stay looking forward you will most likely not arrive nobody runs and runs to win by looking backwards are we together do you know that even as you drive, those who design the mechanics of driving, there's not so much liberty to drive backwards indefinitely. For instance, there's only one reverse gear, there's no reverse one, reverse two, reverse three, because they don't expect you to go down for too long. If you move back, it's only to reposition yourself to go forward. When you're driving forward, there's, as we know, manual driving gear, one, two, three, and whatever it is. Are we together? When you are going forward, they give you the liberty to accelerate and increase your speed. But when you are going backward, the manufacturers of the car, even though many of them were not directly filled with the Holy Ghost, they knew instinctively, which is consistent with Scripture, that nobody keeps going back indefinitely and you want a reverse gear too reverse gear three reverse gear five it's not necessary 
everything about the mechanics of the car rejects that approach but when you are going forward even self-driving cars don't reverse indefinitely backward because you are just supposed to turn at a bend and then you keep moving forward I don't care what has pegged your eyes to keep looking at yesterday. Hence, you came for this service tonight. I decree and declare the grace to turn your attention forward may be released over your life. Let me tell you one of the disasters of focusing on yesterday. It keeps justifying your not going forward. Yesterday can give you sufficient reasons to not rise again. Yesterday can give you sufficient reasons to not press forward again. Are we together now? And you see, yesterday will always come with a sense of legitimacy and entitlement. It will justify why you are failing and why you keep failing. Justify why your life may not move forward. There are people today who will not take responsibility over their lives and their destiny courtesy the excuses of yesterday. A wise man once said the best time was yesterday he said the next best time is now there's nothing you can do about yesterday if it's good glory be to god if it's bad it's gone but now that you have the gift of life energy and your mind is still sane and coordinated you can begin to make profitable pro destiny decisions this is not your rest so the starting point of any destiny i wrote here is the desire to make progress usually there is no uh, now i know that there are all kinds of you know cars today especially sport cars that are purported to jump from zero you know kilometer per hour to almost 150 in as little as four seconds five seconds six seconds maybe less than that but at least we know that it is not a jump from zero to 150 it must start from one two three four five no matter how fast so the starting point of any destiny is first a desire for progress you're not going to be able to break that inertia if you do not have a desire to make progress and to advance in life and destiny the starting point if you want to become you want to evolve spiritually uh, in and in every ramification you must have a desire to make progress but something happens to men when you begin to make progress especially commendable progress the passion to press the passion to continue and the passion to finish seems to evaporate and most people even those who start well even those who make commendable progress never seem to be able to finish hallelujah my assignment tonight as guided by the spirit of god is to give us keys keys that provoke dissatisfaction that regardless what stride what progress you have made in the spirit that as i dish out these keys like serving you a spiritual meal it will cause a holy anger a holy provocation within your spirit and you will tell yourself this is not my rest as much as i have seen god move greatly this is not my rest this is not the greatest level of the anointing i can carry this is not the greatest level of revelation i can step into are we together this is not the greatest um credence i can give to my call and my ordination my election the Bible says to give diligence to make your calling and your election sure. It is your responsibility to partner with the spirit of grace to bring validation to the authenticity of your call. There are keys. As always, there are keys. Completion does not just happen. Ever increasing glory does not just happen. The Bible already gives you the basis of your press and confidence. But you must understand the keys that make what is written become your experience. I have taught you in this scripture in, in Koinonia that there, the Bible has two expressions there. Is what we call finished realities from God's standpoint. Prophetic realities. E.W. Kenyon will call it the legal side of redemption. And then there's their prophetic experiential manifestation, the vital side. When what is written now becomes a reality in your life, your assignment is to master how to convert the truths that are written. A compendium of God's promises, God's desire, God's expectation for you to engage by faith through knowledge. Are we together? And turn whatever it is that is written to now become your experience. Your Christian experience for sure will be frustrated if you keep reading 
certain things in the Bible that never find expression in your life. Reading it in the Bible should provoke you so that you engage the keys. Are we together? That commit God to perform the things that are written so that they speak in experience in your life. And I'm praying for you. Everything you have written that has been written and you have desired to see manifest in your life as i hand you these keys tonight in the name of jesus christ may these keys become ladders may they truly take you to the place of completion in your life say amen, amen. i have not been in ministry for too long i am not just starting by the message of god we've been around for a bit and i have seen people rise and fall I have seen great businesses with all due respect i've seen servants of the living god rise with fire and vibrancy such momentum such dexterity and passion and you will think sometimes that people who arrive they will complete their assignment in one year but i've seen people literally evaporate like smoke before the wind are we together and yet i have seen others who started in a way that you wonder if they even if they are given many lifetimes they will not finish but somewhere in their journey the mercy of god met them their hunger and their passions were spared and some of them are still standing they look like they will not stand but they are still standing today i learned very early in life and ministry that an arrival mentality is cancerous by an arrival mentality, we do not mean just having a vision to arrive. We mean a mentality that brings you to a point of self-sufficiency and complacency. An arrival mentality can bring an unwanted inertia over your life. It's an extra luggage upon the vehicle of your destiny such that the speed, the momentum that you require to drive your destiny to completion, you lose that momentum because of an arrival mentality. I used to think when I started out in life and I started my work with God, that only failure provokes people to, you know, uh, failure brings discouragement and stops people from finishing strong. But I learned later on that eventually, both success and failure can be enemies of your destiny. It is only that one is a more visible enemy than the other. Success is a friend that later becomes an enemy. Success does not start as an enemy. It starts as a friend. But when you entertain its presence too much, it can distract you until it becomes an enemy. Are we together? Many have failed because they once succeeded. Failed in business. Failed in destiny. Many pastors have failed are crawling through the doors of destiny, the gates, the corridors of destiny, barely trying to survive relevance and impact. And the simple reason is because we got to a point where we violated a major spiritual law. Paul educates us and here's what he says, that not that we are sufficient in ourselves to think anything of ourselves. He said, our sufficiency is of God who has made us able ministers. Are we together? After the spirit, not after the letter, for the letter kill it, but the spirit gives life. So I want to hand you these keys and please I want you to lend me your attention in the name of Jesus Christ. Make sure you are alert, make sure you are not just looking but you are receiving. Are we together? You receive through your eye gate, you receive through your ear gate and other impulses that your spirit, the mechanisms built within your spirit to receive the word. But principally your eye gate and your ear gate. The Bible says, he that has an ear, let him hear. That means not everybody has the kind of ear that translates to attentiveness. I come by the grace of the sower and seeds are about to be planted to over glorious destinies now. And some of you, I hope you will not be careless to fall asleep and allow Satan come and plant something else. And for others, I'm praying that your heart has been prepared so that it is not thorny ground, so that it is not... Uh, you know any kind of soil that is unconducive for the seed I'm praying for you that on account of what you will hear tonight may you produce harvests harvest of 30 fold 60 fold and if you are really connected to this ministry may you never rest till you produce a hundred fold in the name of Jesus I will never be 
never be satisfied so here i am fill me up with your presence i will never be never be satisfied so here i am fill me up with your breath desperate for more desperate for more desperate for more and more and more of you lord desperate for more desperate for more Desperate for more and more and more of you, Lord. The first key according to scripture that provokes dissatisfaction and sponsors continuity even unto a point of completion, regardless your current result, when you hold on to this key, it sustains the power to consistently provoke dissatisfaction and to drive your life to sponsor continuity until you finish strong. Number one is called vision. Vision. The first factor according to scripture that provokes dissatisfaction and drives men, all kinds of men, to never stop, to never be satisfied until they finish, until they attain unto God's expectation is called vision. What is vision? A picture of your prophetic destiny. A picture of your prophetic destiny. What is vision? A picture of God's standard, God's expectation for you. I'm giving you a slightly different definition other than that which you would hear in a mainstream leadership discussion. In as much as this applies to leadership, my focus here is on destiny actualization, particularly your spiritual growth and advancement. Vision. A picture of your prophetic future. A picture of the benchmark. You see that? One thing I know about vision is that it helps you to benchmark your progress. It helps you to benchmark your progress. If you do not have a God-ordained reference for your life, any standard you attain greater than where you were will be enough for you. Did you get what I just said? If you do not have a standard high enough, challenging enough, even if you take one step ministerially, one step financially, one step career-wise, one step in leadership. Once you are better than yesterday, you will arrive and settle. And I submit to you that there has been a territorial programming on many of us by reason of the various cultures that we come from. There are cultures that by default, if you are born into those cultures, you stand a risk of being complacent in life. Not because you are evil, not because those you came from are evil. It is a culture that does not celebrate any press for continuity. Anything better than where you are is enough. And some of us, we have embraced some of these things to our detriment. Once you are better than yesterday or better than someone else, and I hope you know according to scripture, we are not called to a life of competition. Competition has become the unbecoming of many. I will always give an example in this house. Let me repeat it one last time. That if you have a student who scores 30%, another scores 20%, another 10%, another 5 and another 0 who got the highest score? 30 percent. But who passed the exam? None. If you are to award them based on that, that, that standard, you will give the award to the guy who got 30 percent. But based on the rating that shows true success, all of them failed. The guy who did not write the exam, the guy who got 0, 1, 10, 30, all failed. There are many of us who have been receiving awards for years only to find out that your score in destiny has been less than 10. It's only that those around you have so failed, you look like a celebrity. Are we together now? It is often said that in a world of blind people, the one who can see a little is usually enthroned as king. Doesn't matter what else he's not seeing until he later becomes a slave to another king who sees well. Are we together? Many, many people today celebrate mediocrity 
because they look around and they find people who are not even prepared to start the race and because they are privileged either by mercy by mistakes by law of time and chance to take a step or a few steps ahead of their yesterday ahead of those who were in their yesterday they settle and sometimes they use those little strides they build monuments around it and tell all kinds of disturbing stories around it I used to be great I used to do all of that I'm praying for you again in the name of Jesus Christ whatever makes you to just compare yourself with those around you and keep giving yourself fake awards awards that the realm of the spirit is not recognizing awards that life and destiny is not recognizing I pray for you that spirit of mediocrity may it live your life forever in the name of Jesus Christ vision vision is very powerful Habakkuk chapter 2 from verse 2 and 3 are we learning tonight it says write the vision write the vision listen carefully then it says make it plain I like what it says that he may run that reads it not he may run that writes it the one who writes it may not run, but the one who reads it, who keeps revisiting that vision, what God told you, there is energy that comes when you open the book again and look at what he told you, what he told you in 2008, what he told you in 2009. The book may be old, but the vision is still fresh. If you can open that old book, that old iPad, see what he told you. You were more discerning than you are now for some of you when he told you. You can trust what he told you because the things that deadened his voice were not yet in your life. You can trust the purity of what you had that time. Are we together now? Most likely that time you were still poor. Most likely that time you were not married yet. Most likely that time you still had needs. There were obvious needs that made your retreat pure. It was true. The deception of fame have not distracted your hearing. Write the vision. It says he will run that reads it. Many of us are priding in the fact that we've written, but we've not read it. It is impossible to keep reading and then remain complacent. I still visit my old notes today and sometimes I am flattered by the level of discernment and accuracy receiving some of the things that God said. I wonder how I got to receive those things. I know because now knowing what I know, I, I know the kind of alignment that would have brought those prophetic words. I now know that it was truly messy. Are we together? Let me tell you this. There are many of you, if you took what God told you that you wrote, if you read it and revisited it, your life would have been greatly enhanced till now. What most of you do is you write it and then give others to read it. But you don't read it yourself. You will tell people the stories. I know what God told me. I am a kingdom financier. I know what God told me that there is an apostle within this frail vessel. There is a prophet within this frail vessel. Are we together? The reason why you have not sustained the grace to submit to the disciplines that make for that prophecy to manifest is because you stop reading it. Some of you don't even know where the notebooks are. I learned from Dr. Miles Munro before he went to be with the Lord. He said his office would seldom have awards. He's received all kinds of awards in his lifetime, but he said that he doesn't put too much of those awards. And I learned that from him quite honestly. Uh, I have received a number of awards in my life quite and I'm, I'm very grateful I don't know where some of them are some of them are still wrapped I've not even opened them a few of them are in my office just because of space but I make sure that I'm not tempted to stand there and look I pass as I go to sit because when you stand there you can become like Lot's wife Lot's wife is a lesson to anyone who looks back the Bible says remember Lot's wife. Your Sodom and Gomorrah can be anywhere and right in your office, right in the place of grace and opportunity, you can turn to a pillar of salt. Are we together? Vision. Anybody who is visionary, let me tell you the truth, has to pray that God should help them sleep. Not because they have a health problem, 
because there is something that drives you you know sometimes i am amazed i check the time and maybe it's nine in the morning and next time i'm checking it's like four or five and i'm like my god what happened and you are literally begging god can you add two more hours before it's 12 midnight some of you are tired by nine you mean this long day what am i going to do with all the time it is lack of vision it's not an attack when you are a visionary person let me tell you god will have to preach to you and say my son take rest now i rested are we together and sometimes you wake up and check the time and you almost want to ask god for so for 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 um apologies to say i'm sorry it's as if you sin against your destiny how did this time just pass like that because there is always what to do in the life of a visionary person you will never find idleness always something to do there's prayer to pray you have your prayer targets you have your word study targets are we together you have your personal development targets your spiritual growth targets there are things you have you may be alone but you are busy let me tell you visionary people when you tell people you are busy they think you are lying because our idea of busy is i'm in the midst of people you can be all alone yet so occupied that you have to beg for more time visionary people many of us here do not have vision is the reason why life is not worth living no meaning no drive no nothing you get up in the morning if you are fortunate to have a destiny waster call you or unfortunate for you are you free what do you want to do today I'm, I'm, it's okay can i come around and sometimes oh there's this movie that just came out are you aware there's another one i have all of them i bought it don't worry about buying it let's just watch and time and your days continue to go and then once you finish you move to um, Twitter Facebook balance it up with all the rest and then as you finish you can gossip and then your whole day finishes you see that and then you get up and wonder why others are making progress great news good news is always around your camp and for you you are stunted every distraction around your life in the name of jesus every enemy fighting your vision i decree and declare may it give way now please be seated when you find a man with no time for marking time when you find a man with no desire to camp and build a monument around his success and his strides of today there is something greater than today driving him are we together we read that earlier i like paul he says in philippians chapter 3 we read that earlier verse 13 he says this not that i have i have apprehended 3 13 can you give us philippians 3 and verse 13 i count not myself to have apprehended i hope you know the guy speaking wrote two thirds of the new testament excellent apostle by every definition met the god of the bible a man who was not part of the apostolic community but came from behind talk about speed that peter said ah this guy i'm the chiefest of the apostle but this man his writings are hard 18 years in the wilderness of arabia came back with fire hmm. i count not myself to have apprehended but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth for the things that are before. Now the emphasis is verse 14. It says, I press towards the mark. Shout it, say the mark. Yeah. One more time, say the mark. Yeah. One more time, say the mark. Yeah. Look at me. How many of you know that the way most coaches train athletes, especially those who run, the way they train them is that if you are going to be a national you know person running for your nation for say a hundred meter dash they don't train you with hundred meters no they will train you with about 150 meters and the psychology is to program your mind to build energy momentum and expectation are we together like a thermostat that means every time you cross hundred your mind still assumes that you still have 50 that's how they train champions if you train a champion to run a hundred meter race and you train him hundred meters he will most likely take last others who stretch the bar do 200 meters the guy is running 200 meters but the real preparation is for 100 meters and he will run and finish he wants to stop but his mind is saying you are failing 
because the bar has been stretched. Some of you, your bar is too small. Too small. Destiny is demanding 100 meters. Your training is 5 meters. And you keep celebrating yourself only to stand at the field and see that you're not able to cross 5. Vision is powerful. What does vision do? It gives you focus. What does vision do? It gives you legitimacy to say no. When you are a visionary person, you have a legitimate ground to say no to many things. You must learn to say no even to good things. Let me tell you, when the devil brings evil and you say no, he will bring good. The most important thing is your destruction, whether through good or evil. You must learn to say no. When you are visionary, you can tell even nice friends who are, I, I'm happy for this, but I'm sorry, I may not have the time for this. We'll reconsider another opportunity. Vision. Hallelujah. Vision gives you the discipline to supervise yourself. The discipline to supervise yourself. First Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 24. Paul was admonishing us and says that know ye not that they which run in a race he says they run all but only one receiveth the prize leaves you with a charge he says so run that ye may obtain run in such a way that at the end of your days your life would not have been wasted your energy would not have been wasted ministerially financially family wise maritally in every career wise it says run in a way that you will win hallelujah vision is the first key i can tell you by the message of god every ministry every business every individual i remember those days when we started we were not so many but every time we had the opportunity to gather i would say the future of this ministry was in that word e and i then i would say that word i international the mandate was to the globe even when we had not gone anywhere the mandate was to the globe are we together the zuckerbergs and the elon musks and all the people today that were celebrating go and hear how they started some of them started in garages some of them started in rooms are we together now and do you know for some of them they still maintain such a lifestyle do you know why because they are simulating an atmosphere that forces them to continue i used to wonder why rich people deliberately make their life very modest It's because they have found out that success beyond a level becomes cancerous let me repeat that success beyond a level becomes cancerous it becomes a burden first success becomes an instrument of healing it heals you from the perception of being a failure then it finally proves the point to all and sundry that you cannot be a failure again then it starts killing you most people do not know that you need to be trained to be successful then you need to be trained to manage success i can tell you managing success is harder than becoming successful are we together it's just that many people never really truly become successful and so because they are obsessed with using success as a tool to heal themselves from the perception of being considered as failures they will no matter what the body needs they will receive it with joy it's like someone um, let me just give a, a humorous example it's like someone who is having his first opportunity to fly overseas say for instance are we together and let's say he's transiting from one nation to the other do you know that even if you are going to spend two days on that journey because it is your first journey you are happy to sit down there in an airport over a transit flight for one whole day and you are still not angry at least you left your country for instance are we together yes but a time comes when as you travel again and again that pressure the point has been proven you will now realize that such a journey is really a burden and a time will come you would deliberately reject such an offer because you now value other things greater than the need for validation like your peace and your time this is how it is with destiny there are people who will not mind walking through fire provided it will give people an expression of them being successful and truly because of your press the point will eventually be proven but when it is proven you will now see the burden that comes when success is not managed who is learning tonight
the house of God is where we learn wisdom. So when God is telling you, take it easy, listen to him, he has never failed. It's not that he failed and learned from his failure. He has never failed. Are we together? Vision. Vision is very powerful. There is a benchmark. Listen, there is an expectation. Man of God, your expectation is not the program you organized. Thank God for it. But if that is the only thing you have been clapping for till today, then you are not doing well. You need to trust God for grace. There is a bar. I look at Koinonia every time I stand before you and let me tell you what I see. I see what I'm doing now, but there is a dissatisfaction in my heart because I compare what I'm seeing now to what was written in that old notebook and there is still a serious gap. And so while I'm preaching to you, I'm, I'm, I'm hurrying up to finish with you so that I'll go back and say, ah God, let's cover this gap. Let's cover this gap. Thank God for what we're doing across the nations. Thank God for the level of anointing. Thank God for the level of wisdom. But there is more. Someone shout, there is more. Yes. One more time, say, there is more. Yes. One of our lovely ladies sang a beautiful song and said, there is more than this. Oh yes, there is more. There is more. You must get angry within your heart and tell yourself there is more. There is more. Thank God for the level of prosperity you have gotten to from begging and borrowing. At least now you can pay your rent. Before you start wasting your time and having an arrival mentality. You see that now? For as long as you are still thinking about money and worrying about it and lying about it, you have not, you have not arrived. So don't pat yourself at the back forever. You are not the house owner. Thank God for what he has done. But let there be a hunger in you. The day you now buy your house, thank God for it until the day you can give. Don't stop. Who is learning? Thank God for the man of God. You know, if I have any advice for people, especially, you know, sometimes people meet me who God is helping, giving visibility, and they say, Apostle, if you have any lesson, what would you teach me? I'll tell them, let me tell you. This success you see, you must learn how to manage it. If not, it will tear you like a wild animal. Because the higher you rise, the more impactful your fall is. If you're on the ground, you can fall and nobody knows. But when you are up, as you fall, it is even more painful. I remember a vision that I had many years ago. In that vision, I was in a program. I don't know how many times I've shared this. But I was in a program and um, I think it was the stage, a living faith stage like Canaan land, if I, if I recall. And then I was to stand and preach. But the way the stage was, you stand on the pulpit, not the ground. So there is a skill. If you don't know how to stand, you will fall. And I remember I stood there. I was shaking, but I was learning how to stand. I was not really, I didn't fall, but I was not stable at that time. When I woke up, I remember I wrote it down. I said, the devil is a liar. I must know how to stand on this thing. Listen, I've taught you, learn how to force life to work. Learn how to force life to work. I mean what I'm saying. If you think life will work on its own, you are wasting your time. Right from the days of John until now. Businessman, if it's not working, force it to work. More knowledge, more grace, more prayer, more counsel. Force it to work. Hallelujah. If you are somebody who gives excuses, you will never be able to work with me. Never. I will be a burden to you. No, you don't come before me and give flimsy excuses. Tell me the problem and start suggesting the solution before I continue. So my people know, once you are telling me a problem, make sure at the back of your mind, you are already prepared to suggest. Ah, they stole this. Uh -huh. So what are you doing now as a leader? Who is learning? Use this as a CEO. Train your people. Don't always come and bring troubles to the table. Don't promote anybody who is not providing solutions. Vision. Everybody say vision. One more time, say vision. I'd like you to be angry in your spirit this night that in the name of Jesus, every distraction, I must have a theme for my life. Are we together now? As a couple come together, we are married, we have three children. But what is the vision for this home? We just married though and thank God that the children are growing. Uh -huh. What happens to them now? Listen, the Bible says without vision, the people perish. 
as an organization, what is your vision? So that by the time you hit a profit of one million, one billion, one trillion, you don't clap for yourself and say we are right. No. No. What is the vision? I listened years ago to an interview by Steve Jobs, late now. It was a 1992 interview. Listen carefully. He was doing a training, very rare video. He was doing a training for his core leaders at that time. And he was sharing with them the vision of the Apple Corporation. Do you know there was no mention of profit? There was no mention of computers in that, in that discussion. His passion was to simply make life better for people based on what he was teaching them. So the gadgets that later evolved were simply offshoots of that desire. Are you seeing that now? That's why when one gadget fails or is outdated, the vision is still the same. They invent another gadget. The vehicle is not the reason for the company. There is a goal. All the Apple phones, the gadgets, they are vehicles. Have a vision for your life. Are we together? You break that vision into goals. Then break them into steps. Strategies, steps. What is the vision for your life? What is the vision for your ministry? Let me tell you the truth and I submit to you, you have been trained. Never follow a man who cannot define the vision. Never become part of an organization or part of any move movement that does not have a defined vision. Where are we going? Are we together now? Vision. It may tarry, but let there be a vision. Let there be a vision for your life. Okay, we are going to Lagos. Lagos by road is how many hours now? 12. It's 12 hours, but 12 hours is not 24 hours. There are people going that way. The driver who is driving that car knows he will be 12 hours on the road. By 7 hours, he looks like he's going to the end of the earth, but he's still going to get there. And suddenly, slowly but surely, are we together? Sometimes they may have to stop to rest. Sometimes, unfortunately, they may say there's maybe a security challenge and they may have to highlight for a while, but it doesn't deter the vision. Let me tell you this. Every time you find yourself constantly in need of motivation, especially external motivation, your vision is not strong and not clear enough. When your vision is strong and clear enough, it sustains such power. It drives you by yourself. Say in the name of Jesus. Please shout it like you believe. Say in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare that I have a vision for my life. Vision helps you to know what to be part of and what to not be part of. There are many good things you should not be part of because there will be burdens to your life, burdens to your destiny, and they will be counterproductive to your call, election, ordination. Are we together? My life is full of all kinds of proposals, people wanting me to be this, be patron in this, be this. And sometimes I politely greet them and I just reject it. I tell them, oh, I'm sorry. I may not have the liberty. There's no reason accepting this responsibility and not giving my best to it. It is wiser, better to have a few things on your table and then you commit to pressing them till they finish. Are we together? If you wake me up, it's koinonia. Call me any day is koinonia. My mind is what God is doing next through this platform to bless people, to impact that fire of revival, to reveal Jesus. Anybody who has come for koinonia at least one service must have heard something along the lines of Jesus revealed, Jesus glorified. When you say this is koinonia, you are not saying this is Joshua Selman. There, is, there are different ways of capturing the vision so that it is born in your heart. It's not publicity, it is training. When you don't train believers, they become ill-trained and they become ineffective. Do you know? By the training, and I say this, I know I'm speaking to the globe, but let me talk for a moment to our family. Do you know there is an orientation we've sustained in this ministry? Whether or not you are here, it doesn't matter which of our expressions. Anywhere you find yourself, people function as though they are at home here. That means that sometimes we travel to a place and... If there was someone serving in the protocol here, once he hears that I'm coming or there's a koinonia expression, the person gets to duty immediately. It's the orientation. 
your service is beyond location it's governed by vision everybody say vision, vision. one more time say vision. vision number two let's hurry up this is not your rest where you have attained even though you received awards there even though you were commended there even though you've done well there but the Lord sent me tonight to announce to you, man of God, businessman, captain of industry, regardless how good you have done, well done, but this is not your rest. Number two, what is the second key that challenges people, provokes dissatisfaction, and causes people to continue and move beyond progress until they get to completion? Number two, the second key is maintaining a vibrant spiritual life maintaining a vibrant spiritual life spirituality is a sponsor of completion a vibrant spiritual life psalm 63 please very quickly media help us from verse 1 psalm 63 oh god thou art my god it says early will i seek thee my soul thirsted for thee my flesh longed for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. Verse 2, it says to see thy power and thy glory so as I have seen in the sanctuary. Verse 3, it says because thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. 4, reading to 8, thus will I bless thee while I live. I will lift up my hands in your name. 5, my soul shall be satisfied with marrow and fatness and my mouth with praise shall praise with joyful lips verse 6 it says when i remember thee upon my bed say obsession say passion that this guy has left the house of god and even on his bed his mind spiritually minded and meditate on thee in the night watches passion because thou has been my help therefore in the shadow of your wings will i rejoice final verse my soul followed hard hard that's the word i'm chasing after you no matter what i have to do i need you more and more lord i'm chasing after you no matter what i have to do i need you more and Show me a vibrant spiritual life that is always in touch with God. Let me tell you this. Most times when you lose fire is because you lost presence. When you lose fire, the fire to continue, something about his presence is no longer in your life. And the factor that reminds you of that journey has died. And let me tell you this. It doesn't have to be something evil that distracts you. Sometimes the burden of responsibility. You later become an administrator like they wanted to make the apostles in Acts chapter 6 and verse 4. Are we together? To leave the ministry of the word and prayer and go to serve tables and they say, no, no, no. Administration was not part of our mandate. Uh -uh, uh -uh. We will set up people there to do that. But we will give ourselves continually 6 verse 4 Acts to prayer and to the ministry of the word. Hmm. Second Chronicles chapter 26. And we'll read verse 5, verse 15. Then I'll show you a part I've not shown you before. Ready? And he sought God, the he being Uzziah. He sought God in the days of Zechariah. Please follow carefully. Who had understanding in the visions of God. And as long as he sought the Lord. Finish it with me, Koinonia. I want to go. God made him to prosper. Jump to verse 15, please. Jump to verse 15. The Bible says he made in Jerusalem on the strength of his encounter, wisdom, creativity, witty inventions rested upon him. He made in Jerusalem engines invented by cunning men to be on the towers and upon the bulwarks to shoot arrows and great stones without. And the Bible says his name as a result of the vibrancy of his spiritual life. His name spread abroad for he was marvelously helped of the Lord till he was strong. Here is a lesson, verse 16. 
But when he was strong, his heart was lifted up to his. Destruction is not only down. There is still destruction up too. His heart was lifted up to his destruction. For he transgressed against the Lord his God and went into the temple of the Lord to burn incense on the altar when it was not his duty. That has a different discussion. But just for you to know that he got to a point in his life where God was no longer with him. Read verse 21. Same scripture, verse 21. Please give it to us. Verse 21. It says, and Uzziah the king, he became a leper. That was the consequence. When his heart left the Lord, he began to walk in defiance with God's pattern for him. The result was that he became a leper. And because he became a leper, even though a king, they banished him and his son, Jotham, now reigned in his stead. Can you imagine? A destiny that was vibrant was now cut short. And his son had to come in his stead. The Bible says, he dwelt in several houses being a leper, for he was cut off from the house of the Lord, based on the ordinances God gave them about unclean people. And Jotham, his son, was over the king's house, judging the people of their land. I'm praying for you. Whatever will have to make God replace you, because you have become such a liability to the kingdom, even in his love that he is forced to make do with another. I'm praying for you. May you never get to that point in your life. May you never get to that point in your destiny. In the name of Jesus. Maintaining a vibrant spiritual life. Leviticus chapter 6, 12 and 13. It gives you the revelation on how to keep your spiritual fire burning. Listen please. And the fire upon the altar shall be burning in it. It shall not be put out. And the priest shall burn wood. You see that there's a maintenance system. I can help you light the fire, but I will not help you maintain it. You have to find wood and put that wood, talks of sacrifice, wood, and you burn it every morning and lay the burnt offering in order upon it. And he shall burn thereof the fat and the peace offerings. 13. It says the fire shall ever be burning on the altar it shall never go out. Spiritual vibrancy. Let me tell you this. I have taught you in this house the power of periodic retreats. No matter how busy you are, don't wait for the end of the year alone to practice retreats. You can create different models of retreats. Weekly, monthly, quarterly, before your birthday. We have a culture in this ministry. When it is your birthday, a few days, you shut down as much as possible and flog it out with God before you eat cakes and turkeys and all of that. Birthdays is not the time to litter social media with picture when you have not flogged it with God. Let the world celebrate you after God has assessed you. Are you learning now? What makes your birthday happy is that God told you well done, not that you ate cake. If God does not say, well done, eat anything you can eat, your destiny is at risk. The vibrancy of your spiritual fire. Let me tell you this. Show me a man who even may not have a vision for his life, but has an obsession for God. The mercy of God will fish that guy back to alignment. Are we together? For as long as that fire is there, one day by the mercy of God, he is sowing into the spirit and the Bible says he that sows to the flesh will reap of the flesh corruption. He that sows to the spirit will reap of the spirit life eternal. Everybody is a farmer. You sow to the flesh to your detriment or sow to the spirit and reap life everlasting. Maintaining a vibrant spiritual life. Prayer life, vibrant. Word study life, vibrant. Passion for the house of God, vibrant. Passion for the things of God, vibrant. Ever vibrant in getting the teachings that build your spirit. Show me such a man. I show you a man who will never settle because by the time the devil wants to tempt him with an arrival mentality, you will come for koinonia or you will listen to one message online and at the end of it, how many of you have started listening to a message and as you got to five, six minutes, you listen to a 30 minutes message for three days. 
because you have to stop after nine minutes and say, ah, God. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. This is the character of serious people. Not the one that is sleeping while the message is playing. No. You hear one word, an interpretation of scripture in a way that you've never heard. Huh? And whilst you, are, you carry that anger and transfer it to the conference, you are going to go and preach it. You hear a message for five minutes and pray for one hour first. Then you now continue and sit down again. No light, you don't care. You hold your torchlight. My destiny must answer. You are suffering, you are poor, things are not working. One revelation, one revelation. One revelation. Are we together now? Yes. One revelation, fire from the altar just comes and you stay with that scripture. And sometimes, do you know, you will be surprised that you will see something that was not even in the message because the spirit of grace is there helping you, bringing greater enlightenment. And from that vibrance, you will write certain things. A message of 10 minutes can become a series for you for one way. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you. Whatever is eating up your spiritual vitality and you've been watching it continue like that, may you receive grace tonight to fight it to death. Grace to fight it to death. Grace to fight it to death. In the name of Jesus. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us too tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching